Last week in Training Mode 101, we briefly touched on four major ways that you can improve your gameplay by using Training Mode. Obviously, combos was one of them, but that's not what we're going to focus on here. The other three were labbing and practicing specific situations that you're struggling with in your matches, obviously practicing offense and pressure in Training Mode, and finally practicing defense in Training Mode. But the majority of that video was focused on showing you all of the options that were available to you in training mode and some brief examples of how you might actually use them. But now I want to focus on those four major areas of improvement and how you're actually going to be able to accomplish them, starting with how to actually lab problems that you're having in your matches. What are some situations that you're struggling with in your own matches? Think about where you're losing out the most. Is there a situation that you don't understand or is there a situation that you think you understand but you still lose out in a lot anyway. Maybe it's worth re-exploring that situation and figuring out what options are available to you. And then take it one step farther and understand what options are available to your opponent that you hadn't even considered. A five-step plan for actually labbing a situation that you're struggling with in your matches could look something like this. First, we're going to identify a problem that we're actually having in our matches. Then we're going to take that situation and we're going to record it in training mode. Then we're going to play that recording back over and over again, each time trying something new to find an answer to that specific recording. If we want to treat this like rock, paper, scissors, we're essentially trying to find out what our rock is to their scissors. But then we're going to go one step further and we're going to see what options our opponent might have to beat our option. We're going to figure out what their paper is to our rock. And then we're going to continue to go back and forth like this over and over again until we're satisfied understanding the situation. And as we go, we're also going to try and find options that can beat more than one of their options at a time. The fewer things we have to worry about in one guess, the better. And without any more explanation, let's continue where we left off last time. So the first of the three areas besides for combos that I mentioned was practicing how to beat specific situations. And uh, I can't really tell you what these situations are going to be. These are going to be things that you run into in your matches where you think, man, I just always lose in this situation. I don't know what to do after Kid Buu's EX Ball. I don't know what to do when Ultra Instinct Goku goes for that command grab. Let's switch one of these characters over to Adult Gohan for a really quick example of what I'm talking about. And let's say something I struggled with a lot in a match is dealing with Adult Gohan's back fist. This is a reasonably fast overhead. It changes a little bit whether he's leveled up or not. But let's say, you know, I get hit by it all the time and I feel like I'm stand blocking it, but I get hit anyway. So we mess around a little bit and we find that the medium version is the one that crosses up. So we could record this as well and practice blocking it. But this isn't very good, right? I don't feel like this is a very good way of labbing against this because we're just labbing one specific recording over and over again and we know what's going to happen in that recording. So maybe what we want to do is record one where he goes same side and then let's go back to our training dummy settings. Let's record in slot two, another one where he goes for cross up and let's set these to random. So we will get both of these. We have to turn them on. Let's set them to one each. And now when we play it back, we can try practicing reacting to each of these. Now these are going to happen at random and sometimes he's going to go for same side. Sometimes he's going to go for cross up as well, although I don't know when each of them is going to happen. I'm getting mixed because he's going same side all the time. Finally, he went cross up. Maybe we mess around with this a little bit and I think, you know, I don't think I can actually react to whether it's same side or cross up. So what are our other options? Let's see. OK, can I maybe anti here? Yes, I can anti here. Can I anti here on reaction? Maybe I got it that time, but I know it's coming again, remember? So let's try to purposely do it maybe a little later and I'm getting counter hit. So it's not perfect. It's not going to be a great option. I think if I'm reacting, it's going to be tough to do consistently. Do we have any other options? Maybe as a guess, I can jump. And it turns out if I jump, cross up protection lets me block either way in this one specific situation. Uh, I'm not saying if you're jumping, you will always block both directions. But in this specific situation, for whatever reason, we can block either direction. I'm actually holding backwards, which should get me hit there, but it doesn't. And it blocks the same side as well. And then maybe you think, OK, well, what is he going to do to beat me jumping or hitting 2H? So let's set another recording where he'd do something like that. And I would think, well, maybe he would just frame trap like that. In fact, I don't even know if that was a perfect frame trap, but we can know for sure if we set counterattack to light. Now, 
the opponent is going to counterattack with a light attack. And the same goes for while we're recording something. So if I were to record and do something, now Vegeta, who is actually player one, is still gonna do the counterattack. So we can now figure out whether our frame trap is a real frame trap or not. Let's just do slot three. Let's set it back to normal. I don't wanna be on random anymore. And let's see really quick. It should beat my 2H. It should beat if I mash. It should beat me if I try to jump out. Yeah. So now we know what his options are to discourage us from trying to escape or beat the overhead. But we also know now that if we show that we're willing to call out the anteater once in a while, then the opponent is going to be forced to start doing things like frame traps, which means now we can get away with just reflecting or even just blocking, which just means, you know, we're going to get mixed up less often. All right. And let's say one of the things that we struggle with is dealing with the situation after Kid Buu's EX ball. I just don't know what to do in this situation. It feels like when I mash, I lose. I know he's negative, but I feel like I never win in this situation. What can we do after we block it? So what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna go to our training dummy recording settings, and we are just going to record basically Kid Buu's ball. And whatever the option was that he did afterwards that we couldn't seem to beat, and we'll see what works. So let's just have him fall with jump H. So now if we play this back where he is doing EX ball and falling with a jump H, we can see what works here. Can I mash? Well, depending on my character, my jab might not hit high enough to beat him. So can we ant here? Yes, we can ant here. But the other thing I constantly kept getting hit by after blocking EX ball was him doing key blast into another EX ball. And I'm thinking, well, how do I beat this? If I can't 2H the key blast, then how do I win in this situation? Do I have to guess between sometimes super dashing through the key blast or 2H'ing the jump H? And if I happen to be wrong and I think he's gonna, you know, key blast, get hit, or am I gonna, you know, if I guess wrong and I 2H when he just key blasts and I get hit, do I have to deal with that? Is there another way to deal with this? So this could be a situation you're struggling with in a match. You just feel like, man, I always lose in this situation or I win very rarely in this situation. You set up these two recordings, and you can just see if there's an option that works against both of them. And it turns out dashing under him is an option. It turns out if we're mid-screen, we can escape by backdashing. You know, obviously we have reflect as an option, but this doesn't seem so good because if he does the key blast into the ball, you know, I have to also separately reflect the ball or something like that. And let's double check that this works with the other recording where he does jump H. Can we backdash? We can backdash. Can we dash under him? Yes, we can dash under him. And you can even go as far as to wonder like, okay, does this still work in the corner? Yes, it works in the corner. And let's say maybe we want to take this one step farther and think what would they do? What would Kid Buu do in order to beat us in this situation if we were trying to dash under him? And it's probably going to be something like, you know, we could get creative here or we could watch top footage and see what they do. But maybe they do X ball and instead of following with jump H, they go for super dash. And if we were to run under them and try to hit a button to stuff them, we get hit, right? Or maybe they just back dash and fall with jump H. So now if I try to run under him, I get hit the same kind of way. And we lab this a little bit more and we realize like, okay, now we can escape. Now we can jump. Now, if we sometimes guess with just doing nothing and blocking, we might just get out of the situation kind of on accident. Or it gives us the opportunity to escape with a super jump or something. Or maybe I wouldn't really do this, but we could call this out with like dashing into 2H or something like that. But now we have a better understanding of the situation than we had before. And I've actually used this as an example in a video before because I think it kind of demonstrates the point pretty well. Next week on the channel, we're going to be moving on to how to practice offense and defense in training mode, which I know is what a lot of you guys are looking forward to the most. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to continue learning Dragon Ball Fighters with me, I would highly recommend doing that. There's plenty more on the way soon. Thanks for watching.